Numbers chapter 14 and verse 24. I will make reference to Joshua, but I wanted you to be in Numbers. Numbers 14, 24. Do we have that? Because of how special the word of God is and how important it is, I pause a little more to ensure that you have it and perhaps you would want to make note of it. We spoke on this last week, Numbers chapter 14 and verse 24. It reads like this. Perhaps you can read with me if you are using the King James Version. And if you can see overhead, feel free to use that. In the event that you do not have a Bible and you are not able to see your, your, your version that is not the King James Version, let those who have the King James Version, you can read. It reads like this, But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and hath followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. It's one of the, the texts I would like for us to, if I don't write in these Bibles anymore, but it's a good thing to put an asterisk or something there to reflect on. Father, Bless the reading of your words and bless us as we meditate. Help us to focus and may our thoughts be productive before you. Remove flaws and our own limitations and let your limitless power open our minds to your honor and to your glory. This we ask in Christ name. Amen. Most persons will be fully conversant with the, the background to the text. Once we start to unfold it, it would not require much because the scene reminds us of the time when the children of Israel, having left the territory of Babylon, of Egypt, Egypt, they were on a journey to what we refer to as the promised land or to Canaan. This journey had serious political implications. And I introduced that concept early because some would rather to say that the church must stay out of politics. In a real sense, it's a task that is impossible. The church cannot take a clear-cut position of not being involved in politics. We must wisely, though, distinguish between politics and party politics. Party politics has to do with people's preferences to who should lead them. And in St. Vincent, we have a, an ugly tradition where party politics serves as a basis for hate and ridicule. It's one that the church must oppose and we must help people to see better ways. I'm not saying better political parties. Politics, though, is a broader concept. 
it encompasses one's way of life. How we institute laws, the economic policies that should guide, and how people, individuals, must be given the chance to mushroom, to blossom, to flourish, and to make themselves better. Often the difference between politics and party politics is perception. In this case, Joshua, or Moses, was leader of Israel. Israel, I must underscore, was not a, a political state per se, because Israel had a religious ruler, a religious leader, who was God himself. At this time in the nation's history, Moses, as the one, the deliverer who brought them out of Egypt, could not have appealed to his king and say, you know, the people have a problem. Because the king then was Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Pharaoh had no sympathetic heart to the people of God. Moses' complaint, his complaints, were to go to God. God was head of state. It was called a theocratic state. God was head. I like theocratic states. I like where God is in charge. Because when it's man, you have too many problems. We have problems with color. We have problems with race. We have problems with all kind of things. And I know this is going around the world. So that the, the rat race that is presently being encouraged in North America is instructive to us. That we as a church don't condone white and black in terms of superiority and, and inferiority. We speak to the issues that all people of all race has a right to live and to live respectable, dignified lives. The children of Israel were to go to a land that God said, no, they should go to. This land was inhabited by Canaanites, ungodly people, but the earth belongs to God. Amen? God is owner of the earth. He owns everything. And all of us, every individual has an allegiance to God. We cannot live independent of God. Now if God said Canaan is for the Israelites, no man can question God, can challenge God. No man can advise and counsel God to say, well, God, Consider this and choose the land of this instead of Canaan. If God said Canaan is where the people should go, then God is always right, even when he looks wrong. God is always right. It's important to understand that, that God is always right. So, they were on their journey, and when they reached a place Moses sent ten spies to do a feasibility study to sort out the land to look at the land and to, to determine what strategies should work and brothers and sisters we're not going to join with people and behave ignorant that if the church sits down to plan and we come up with hardcore strategies that we are worldly some people think that if the church do feasibility studies and so on, that the church is becoming like the world. But this is our right. In fact, the earth 
is belonging to God. And we are the ones as the people of God who have a right to understand what's happening and to take the lead in setting policies. And that's why I said don't tell the church not to be engaged in politics. Because what you, what people, when people say that, what they mean is leave people to do what they want and we must sit down and pray. We have to do more than that. Amen. And so we bemoan the condition, we bemoan the fact that the church doesn't have a home for the aged. And we bemoan the fact that we do not have socially integrated programs to help people who are less fortunate. The church has to take the lead and play the role in helping people. But when we sit down and say stay out, and then all the, the, the coming together of all the taxes, one set of people must take it and spend it how they like. And then the church sit down and you say, you blame the church for everything. Blame the church for what? I sound a little argumentative, don't I? But he sent the spies to, to investigate and they came back with their report. 80% of, of those who went came back with negative report. There is what we call the 80-20 principle. That most of the times, most of the people will go on the defeatist side. The negative side. They can't do. We are not able to side. Only 20% of the people will often say, with God, we can make it. Because you see, people from the natural inclinations are not likely to depend on God. Because man is intrinsically ungrateful. And self-will. Though God is the owner of the earth, though God is the master, People often don't want to recognize that. So here is the backdrop. Joshua and Caleb, two of the, those who went, came back and said, the land looks good. Milk and honey. I don't know why milk and honey forces. I don't know if it's a natural tendency to gravitate towards food. But they said milk and honey in the land. But that's not all we see. We have also seen that there are giants there too. The Anakins, a nation of, of giants. The, the spies reported they are there. But the two who stood up and gave a report that was worth looking into. And brothers, I said this to say that the majority is not always right. I say that to say you cannot always follow the crowd. You have to learn to stand and think for yourself. Because I tell you, if you follow the crowd, the crowd will turn around and laugh at you. Is that true for school? It's true for anywhere now. Right at school, it's true. Can't follow the crowd. Now here is where we are. So now the Lord, all this thing is in hindsight. It, it happened. So the Lord is saying, he's giving commendations. The Lord is now acknowledging, a, like, like it's not an analysis. It's, it's really taking the full situation and responding. The Lord is saying, you know, I'm happy with the approach that Caleb and Joshua took. It's one thing to have commendations from men. It is one thing to have men giving you approval. I am always concerned about this, the approval of man. Because man gives you praises today and change it tomorrow. It is just a change of situation. You didn't deliver. You didn't live up to your promises and man will change their positions. Understand that. Friends will 
You will we'll be with you for a period of time, but when things change, friends often don't stay. A few people stick with you. If things turn from good to bad, is it not true? Right, where, right here in the church, you know. If you preach a nice sermon, people, oh, good, good, but let it turn. Let it turn. So do not, do not build your life on the praises of men. Don't build your life on the favor from men. Build it on the praises from God. Amen. Because in this situation with the spies, ten said we are not able. Ten went back with bad report, but two stood up and said we can do it. And notice where God, the side on which God came in. God recognized the man for his position. He recognized Caleb for his steadfastness. He recognized him for his faith and his belief and his trust and confidence and said, my servant Caleb. Oh. Won't it be nice for God to say to you that you are his servant? Won't it be an honor? Won't you be, be truly pleased to have an affirmation and an endorsement from God to say, this is my servant. This is the enviable position that Caleb was in. But let's look at why God affirmed this. We, we said this last week. In the text it says, Caleb had a different spirit. He had another spirit. What is this saying? What is, it? what is the truth? What is the reality? That in this world, there are diverse spirits. Wake up. Don't sleep on me. In this world, there are diverse spirits. Let's say that another way. There are different spirits. There is the, the spirit of Satan. You have the spirit of the world, which is indeed the spirit that is motivated by Satan. There is the spirit of self. And we can go on and on and, and talk about spirits that are vying for supremacy. Are you here? Spirits vying for supremacy. There are many spirits at work. There are many spirits seeking to control the machinery of man, humanity. I like how Paul puts it in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 4. Because Paul refers to the church and he said, we are fighting a war. It's not a war that is rooted in flesh and blood. In fact, the weapons we use in this war are not carnal. They are weapons that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Weapons that brings into captivity thoughts and minds and, and hearts and, and just bring them under the control of God. You see, Paul understood this well. Ephesians 6. Paul told us that in the warfare, ensure that you are properly dressed. And Paul said, here is where you must get your strength. Because you are fighting a, a battle that is difficult. How many of us know that the battle of life is challenging? And there are many people who are, who are being held captives. 
some through ideologies and, and philosophies and, and contending views. And if your mind is held captive by the power of the enemy, you need a strong deliverer to bring you out. Because I tell you, you can dress that body, you can give that body whatever it wants. And so, but if your mind is a victim, you are a victim indeed. So Paul said, to face life, be properly clothed. Put on the armor of God. There's no other way to make it. Nicodemus found this baffling. So he went to Jesus and he said, explain this to me. Tell me about it. How can I experience this change? How can I come under the influence of this other spirit? And Christ said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus responded, do you mean, and I get the impression from the text that he was serious. It's nearly like saying, but how could a man be serious about something like this? But it was troubling to him. He said, could I, should I go back a second time in my mother's womb? Could you believe a big man was so naive in his thinking, simplistic? His mother? You? Back in your mother's womb? This man is bigger than his mother. How could, how could a reasoning being so, be so overly simplistic? But the real truth is that Nicodemus did not know truth. And the wisdom of God is hidden to those who are in darkness. So what is exposed and simple to God confuses the world. This is fascinating. So Jesus said, Nicodemus, let me, let me educate you. I'm not talking about the natural. I'm talking about something that is beyond your capacity to understand. Hence, you need a different mindset to understand what I am saying. You need the revelation that comes from God. The revelation that God alone can give. Now this is what Caleb understood. Caleb understood something that 10 other spies didn't understand. That if God is with you, you are in the majority even if you are alone. <laughs> something to hold on to. Let, let, let me not rush it. I still won't be long. But hold on to that thought. Write it down. That if God is with you, you and God alone, you are in the majority. You don't need affirmation from men. You don't need affirmation from friends. All you need is an affirmation from God. It's a word from God. It's something that from God that says you are. And because you are, you are my child. And if I am with you, you are able. Can you internalize it internalize it if God is with you you and God alone you're in the majority one young man was standing with Elijah they were in the regions of Mount Carmel and the young man saw the the ambush that was set by the enemy. Soldiers, multitudes of soldiers coming to, to bring the man of God and the people of God into subjection. And he, he ran in, wisely so, and he said, Master, Master, we are in trouble. Trouble? The man of God said, 
Because the word says God will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on him. So the man of God was on the inside. When trouble was on the outside. He was sitting in peace. And when the young man ran in and said. We are in trouble. God's servant remains still. What's the trouble? What's wrong? What's wrong? Tell me. I'm, I'm only putting this in a picturesque way. I guess he said he might have been, if, if, if he were so afraid and, as to being besieged and seeing the might of, of enemy armies surrounding him, I, I suspect his speech could not flow freely and his lips might have been moving faster than the words are coming and he said, come see. We are surrounded. But here was a man with a different spirit. And when he looked and he, he saw the hosts of enemy territory, or enemies being sur surrounding them, he looked again. Remember, he had a different spirit, another spirit. So he looked again. At the young man, I believe as a father, he might have smiled and said, be comforted, man. Don't be troubled. Sometimes, you know, we have to calm people down. Take it easy. And he prayed. Because here is... Here is the point now. Here is what people with the, the other spirit, the one I'm talking, this is what they do. In the face of trouble, in the face of hardship, in the face when things are working against you, people who know God and have a different spirit, they don't become easily ruffled. They are not troubled because they are kept in peace. And often before we run our mouths, we put our hearts into action. Sometimes you have to go to God and you have to say, Lord, this battle is not mine. This battle belongs to you. Oh God, fight on my behalf. And he prayed for the young man that God would remove the scales from his perception, his eyes. That God would open up his mind. Because you see often we have to look with our eyes. Write it down. Look with your eyes. But see with your mind. Makes a difference. Makes a difference. It makes a difference. Look with your eyes. But see with your mind. So I love Paul's writing. He said, let this mind, which was in Christ Jesus, let this mind be in you. Because when the mind of Christ is rooted in you, it's hard to God. shake you. Because who can, who can control God? Who can win God? If God makes a decision and if God puts a word out and if God says your life is blessed, no man can pronounce a curse because you are eternally blessed by God. And if God says great is my faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies you'll see, bank on the words of God, you can trust God's word. That's why we sing, we need a word from you. If I don't hear from you, Lord, what would I do? Wanting you more each day. Show me your perfect way. Elijah prayed, open the man's eyes. And when the word of God took root in his heart, and his eyes were opened, 
he started to see things differently amen could I take a minute and talk to you about that he started to see things differently what he saw baffled his imagination because he did not only see the host of the Syrians that had formed the, the embargo in fact from the indications in the scripture he didn't see them again you, you, they were still there you know they were still there but this time the magnificence and the glory of God had light up lit, had, had brightened his mind so he wasn't seeing the problem he was seeing a solution when he came to the reality he said oh hallelujah master I know see what you're saying what you're seeing he said those that are with us are more than those who are against us child of God do not droop your head in despair do not hang your heads down and grope in darkness you are not children of darkness you are children of the light and God walks with children of the light God gives hope in the midst of hopelessness but you need another spirit to see it you can't be complaining it can't be church today and grumbling tomorrow this makes me a little hot I don't mean to be disrespectful hmm? but you can't be complaining with God you can't say with God you can't say I am defeated where you come from I'm just thinking how nice you are hmm? with God you can't say don't keep saying how things bad we know that already don't focus on that you need another spirit you need the right spirit you need the good one the one who is from above because when he comes in he lights up our lives he opens up our span to reason he opens up the way we think we just think differently we see possibilities are you with me this other way the other spirit that God was comment commending in Caleb is that Caleb was now able to see possibilities let's look at the reality the cities were fenced if you fast forward to chapter to in Joshua uh, you go back well fast forward Joshua about chapter 7 you will discover that one of the cities was Jericho I won't go much further Jericho was well fortified Archaeology has it to say that around the city of Jericho, we know that the walls were great. They were big, high, and they were thick. We're not talking about our kind of walls that fall easily. That way you dig a little trench by the wall and it's going to come down and crush you. We're not talking about that kind of wall or if a little bit of pressure comes on it, it it crumbles because we have to measure our steel the, the amount of steel we put in those walls were well fortified chariots 
And it is, it is history has it to say the walls were in excess of 20 foot thick. 20 feet. Did you tell me your foot is one, one foot long? Size of your shoe, no? I was going to tell you put 20 of it, let's see. But it was span a pretty good thing that horses can race around on the wall, the width. And at the base of the wall, there was a slanted part and it was lined with slime. So, if you approach the wall, climbing was very difficult because it was slippery. But you know God doesn't need to climb walls. Huh? You don't hide behind walls and say, God come get me. Because it's, it's slimed and, and there are people soldiers on the, at different points and the thing to, to shoot their arrows when you're trying to climb up they shoot arrows and pick you out you don't do that with God God is everywhere and God is is just a mighty God who sometimes summon up the flies that the, those disgusting things that come on the cakes God call them up come flies go do a job for me Pharaoh flies all about and comfortable and God called frogs at one point some of the ladies though frogs are not bad things anyway and sometimes we when I was a little boy we used to throw salt on them some of you did that too. Don't laugh at me. You chose salt to, so that it burned their skin and keep them away. You still do it? No, well, frogs are good, really. They look... We don't like to see them, but whenever I see a frog around the house, I know that mosquitoes are somewhere and the frogs are really there to protect us. So, I like having them around. I mean, I don't want them inside. But sometimes God calls frogs and say, come, come do a work for me. Because God is great. He can do everything. So when, the wall, when they had the challenge of the wall of Jericho, the man with the other spirit was saying, I see the wall. I have taken note. I know that there are giants there. But with the help of God, we are more than able. He saw possibilities. It confuses me how God is good. Because humanly speaking, I would have said, let's find a little area where the slime is not so, so thick and let's punch our way through and see if we can get in. And, but God said, no, that's not how I fight. I don't use carnal weapons. I don't curse. Negatively. I don't speak defeat. God said to them, instead of this and that, start praising. Get the praise team. Is anybody here? Get the praise team. Can we trust God? Can you trust God to work for you? God said, get the praise team. Get the worship team. And let them start to sing. The Lion of Judah. Sing. I can hear the people inside Jericho saying, those people, they're singing. They turn to prayer. And while they said that God gave a command, oh, hallelujah. I'm not going to preach on the, the other point. I'm not going on. I'm just leaving it with you. Because the thing about, the thing about Caleb, he followed God fully. He was
was obedient. Is it not true that the word said to obey is better than if you choose to obey God? It may look unpopular, you may look foolish, but it's better. It's better to trust God than to put your confidence in man. It's better to trust God. Put your trust in God. If God says praise him, don't be afraid. Open your mouth and lift up your hands and say praise is better God. Because every time you praise, you are warring in the spirit. You can't see the things that are happening to you. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Could I tell you, you're not fighting flesh and blood? Could I tell you, don't look for man as your enemy? Could I tell you, that look beyond man, that there are spiritual forces trying to bring you into captivity, starting with your mind, trying to cause you to doubt God. One of the first things the enemy does is tell you, don't praise say nothing and every time you say nothing he scores a point and he says don't raise your hand people will ask what's wrong with you so we have come we have graduated to the status where people no longer want to lift their hands and say to god be the glory great things he has done so love he the world that he gave us his son who giveth himself an atonement for sins and open the life gate that all may go in people have become so posh and stoosh and developed in their lives they can no longer throw their hands in the air but if God say lift your hands and praise me I believe we can trust God and when the enemy get you to keep your hands there and get you to close your mouth he starts rejoicing but I want to set somebody at liberty today I want to set somebody's spirit free I want to break through lift your hands and praise God because praises to God are weapons of war when you praise God in the natural things happen in the spiritual God's spirit walks through our praises if you just start to praise him if you just I'm talking about having another spirit some people will sit down and be okay let's just see what happens but here was a man saying I don't just want to see what's happening I want to make something happen I want to be a part of what's happening I'm going with God if God is on my side I have the majority if God is with me I'm more than able if God is with you if God blesses the work of your hand they are blessed indeed he had another spirit and he was willing to honor, honor God, to obey Him. How many people would rather to honor and obey friends? Hmm? What does your friend say? If you dare turn your heart to God, your friends will turn against you. Well, follow your friends. When things go wrong, your friends would help you out. Be careful though. Don't let it go too far. Because if God turns from you, and when you call, He doesn't answer, it's going to be a long night. It's going to be a, light of, a life of a light, a night of misery. And when it goes beyond one night and two nights, and for the rest of life, life becomes dark. Many people become so hopeless. They cut themselves. They drink bad substances. Caleb had another spirit. Followed God fully. Did God work for him? 
Did God help him? When people trust God, does God help them? Hmm? Does God help? Does God disappoint? Does he turn up late? When he turns up, is he broke? Does he have the resources? Does God have the power and the will to help you? Is God capable and able? He is. He is. He can do it. I close by saying, takes time sometimes. God doesn't always just show up anytime we think. But he does show up on time. Always the right time. Always with the right things. Anybody here know about how God does just provide sometimes? That right, you didn't know where it come from, you don't know what. But God, the thing just come at the right time. That God just... He's just good uh, and on time God. He does it the right way all the time. You never can find fault with how God does it. Always come through for you. He's as good now as he was then. We can trust him. Note the last thing, I'm, I'm finished. But note what God said. He had another spirit. Him will I bring into the promised land. I'll give him the blessings, the glory. Caleb, trust God and God will do it for you. Depend on him, he will see you through. Ask him, he will answer. Amen? Father, may you bless our hearts, open our minds, grant us this other spirit, this one that makes us aware that seals our mouth to complaining and frees up our spirit to praise the one that reminds us that you're always there I pray God for an overflow of that spirit Lord the one that, that, that raised Christ from the dead and which can quicken this earthly mortal body. I pray that you will just speak to us and cause something from your words to open our awareness to know that if we trust you, you will provide. Stand with me. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Come, do it as a prayer. Do it as a prayer. Ask it. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes. Yeah. 
Yes, we 